tax freight train is bearing down on your retirement. To protect yourself, you'll have to harness the power of zero. Hello, everybody. This is David McKnight. Welcome to the Power of Zero show. Uh, we're back for another week. And uh, you may know me as the best-selling author of The Power of Zero, Look Before You Lerp, The Volatility Shield, and my latest, which is Tax-Free Income for Life, Step-by-Step Plan for a Secure Retirement. And um, today we're going to give you a little sneak preview of what I'll be talking about in, uh, in that book, which comes out on November 17th. Also, beware that the timing of this is, is, is questionable, but I'm going back and forth with Penguin Random House. Uh, you may want to go check on davidmcknight.com. We may have this available, but go check on davidmcknight.com. If you pre-order uh, Tax-Free Income for Life, you can go, and it has to be the hard copy. It can't be you know Kindle or uh, Audible. It has to be the hard copy. You can go to davidmcknight.com and enter in the receipt number and be able to download instantly chapter one. It's not the whole book, but it's chapter one, and that should wet your whistle just a little bit. If you are looking for a Power Zero advisor to help you navigate all the pitfalls that stand between you and the 0% tax bracket, head on over to davidmcknight.com and click on the button Work with Dave. We'll make sure that we hook you up with a experienced advisor that... Uh, can, has a steady hand and can help you circumnavigate all the pitfalls that stand between you and the 0% tax bracket. And if you are an advisor, head over to powerzero.com and uh, we have some information there that can help you transition your practice to a Power of Zero style practice. Today, we are going to be talking about uh, a concept that I discuss in my book, which is critical to Power of Zero planning. It's what we call time segmented investing. Time segmented investing. What in the world is time segmented investing? Well, we, before we get into what time segmented investing is, let's cover the traditional uh, approach to investing in retirement. The traditional approach simply says that you can have a you know a, a stock bond mix, you know, an, a properly asset allocated portfolio that will protect you from uh, systemic risk. This idea that or systematic risk, as some people call it, this risk that something will happen in society or to government, there might be a depression, there might be a natural disaster, there might be a pandemic like we've seen of late, and that can cause your portfolio to crater right when you need it the very most, which is when you retire. We've discussed, and I discuss in my new book, that there is a basically an Achilles heel with this approach, which has been the, you know, which has been the historical approach that people have taken. And that's that if you suffer a series, a series of negative returns in the first 10 years, now it gets, the threat of this, you know, diminishes significantly once you get into years 11 plus of retirement. But in the first 10 years, your portfolio is susceptible in a particular way to uh, sequence of return risk, which is the risk that you experience a couple bad years, a couple down years in the stock market, such that as you're withdrawing money and as the market goes down, you're drawing money as the market goes down, makes making it much harder for it to recover. We've seen instances where you can run out of money 15 years faster because of the combination of down markets and distributions in those first few years of retirement. It really sort of is kicking your portfolio while it's down, and it makes it very, very hard for it to recover. The way that traditionalists have sort of safeguarded you against this is they've said, well, uh, that could happen. There's a chance that it could happen. It's happened before. For example, if you retired right in the year 2000 and the first three years of your retirement were down years, that would have, you know, made your retirement accounts uh, bank go bankrupt literally 15 years faster than they otherwise would have. So the way that people have traditionally safeguarded against this is by, by adhering to what they call the 4% rule, which basically says that if you only take out 4% of your retirement portfolio in any given year, you will have like a 90% chance of never running out of money. Well, as I talk about in my new book, that, that number has been debunked. It is stale and antiquated, and it was based on very high bond rates back in the early 90s when William Bengen came out with this, this theory. And the stock market outlook was a lot rosier back then. So now people are talking about a 3% rule or even a 2, 2.5% rule. Let's use the 3% rule. Basically what that means is if you 
want to be able to draw $30,000 out of your stock market market portfolio per year, you would have to have a million dollars in your stock market portfolio. If you wanted to live on $100,000 per year, draw $100,000 out of your stock market portfolio based on the 3% rule, you would have to have $3.333 million, okay? So that has been the traditional approach. And, but what I think it does is it, it, it doesn't account for the benefits of what I call time-segmented investing. Basically, what time-segmented investing does is it says during the first 10 years of retirement, traditional asset allocation is not the best way to go about funding your lifestyle needs. And what it does is it basically says, at least this is how I do it in my book, I say, look, you got to have six different portfolios, each of which have different time horizons and each of which are calculated to produce a certain amount of money at a certain time. For example, in year one, if you wanted to fund your first year of retirement, you would say, okay, how much money do I need to fund my retirement? This would include taxes. And if you're funding an LIRP, what have you in your lifestyle, maybe that all adds up to $100,000. So what you would do is you put $100,000 in your cash account. And uh, you don't want to do a lot of investing with the dollars that are earmarked for your lifestyle and other expenses during year one, because you need that money to be there. uh, And so you can spend it. Okay. So that first year is always going to be in cash. But then we have the next portfolio, which is calculated to deliver the money that you need in years two and three. Now, what we would do in that is we'd say, okay, if we don't need to touch, you know, half of that money until year two, we don't need to touch half of that money until year three, what we can do is we can put those put that money into investments that mature half of it in year two and half of it in year three. So what that does is it allows us to take an amount of risk commensurate to the time horizon by which we will need that money. The next portfolio says you're going to need money in years four and five of retirement. So let's invest that pocket of money, that pool of money in such a way that it really sort of matures and gives you a rate of return commensurate to an investment that that will deliver your you, you know your lifestyle needs in years four and five. And then there's the next portfolio that would cover years six and seven. And then the final one is uh, would cover years eight through ten. And each one, each each pool of money gets invested, you know, based on a different risk profile. And that risk profile is, like I said, it's commensurate to the period of time in which you will need that money. So the money that you're going to need in years eight through 10, you're going to take quite a bit more risk with that money. It's still going to be in bond type instruments. There may be some equities in there, but primarily bond type instruments. And we want that money to deliver, you know, between four and 5% uh, because we can take the risk that would allow us to achieve those results because we're not going to need that money for eight to 10 years. Then coming backwards, six and seven, you know, the money we'll need in Year six and seven, we take a little bit less risk. But here's the key. Here's the key. If I know that I uh, am going to have, I'm not going to have to touch a certain pool of money until years eight and ten, eight through ten, and I think I can get four and a half percent net of fees return on that money, then guess what? I can figure out the net present value of the amount of money that I'll need by then. So, for example, let's say that by you know for years eight through ten, I need. I don't know, $500,000 to fund all of my expenses for years eight through 10, I can say, okay, if I'm expecting four and a half percent rate of return, what amount of money would I have to invest in that account today, earning four and a half percent, so that by the time I get to years eight through 10, it's produced the perfect amount. So what's going on there is you're just, you're putting exactly the, the right amount of money that you need into each time segment. And the risk that is associated with each time segment will produce the rate of return necessary to pay for your expenses in that period of time, okay? Here's the key. Anything that is earmarked for years 11 plus is going to be invested in a high octane account. Why? Because you can afford to take a lot of risk with dollars that you aren't, you aren't going to have to touch for 10 years, okay? You can watch that money go up and down. You can say, hey, I've got all my money earmarked for years one through 10, so I can sleep soundly at night knowing that even if the market's going up and down, the likelihood that 10 years from now that the market will be up is, uh, is, is a pretty good bet 
Therefore, I don't have to worry about that, ex that, that extra risk that I'm taking in my stock market portfolio. So this is a, a high growth, high octane, pedal to the metal account where all of the money that's not earmarked for those first 10 years is going to go into that account and it's going to be able to take a lot of risk. Now, I think that when you were to, if you were to take the standard deviation of the overall portfolio, given those low risk investments in the first 10 years and the high risk investments in years 11 plus, I would imagine that this is going to be, have a similar standard deviation to, I don't know, a, a traditional portfolio. But what have you done in the meantime? What you've done in the meantime is you've completely eliminated sequence of return risk because there is no, no risk that you're going to suffer a 30% down, you know, downward uh, turn in, the, in, your, in your portfolios for, for the dollars that are earmarked for those first 10 years. So you literally have eliminated sequence of return risk, which is one of the single greatest risks that you are facing in retirement. So... All in all, you basically have six portfolios here. And are there going to be power? Are there, are we rolling out power zero portfolios that correspond to each of these portfolios? Absolutely, we are. And about the, in the next month or so, you'll hear more about that shortly. But you have, you know, what the first portfolio is cash, second portfolio is covers years two through three of your ret uh, retirement, years four through five is portfolio number two. Portfolio number three covers years six and seven. Then portfolio number four covers years eight through 10. And then portfolio five is that high growth, high octane portfolio that I was talking about. Okay, so we've established the basics for time segmented investing, but let me throw you a curveball. Let's say that uh, you want to completely eliminate longevity risk. You say, hey, look, I don't want to run out of money before I die. I want to have a guarantee that no matter what happens, no matter how long I live, if I live to be 120, I'm going to have money coming into my checking account, meeting basic lifestyle expenses. So when coupled with my social security, I want a guaranteed stream of, of lifetime income. But then you also say, hey, look, I understand the perils of having income coming out of my tax deferred bucket. If I have a guaranteed stream of income coming out of my tax deferred bucket, tax rates go up. All of a sudden, I got a hole in my income because I have uh, I'm putting get paying more money towards tax, and I'm keeping less money for myself. How am I probably going to compensate for that hole in my income? I'm probably going to have to spend down all my other stock market uh, assets to compensate, and I don't want to do that. I also understand that any money coming out of my tax deferred bucket is counted as provisional income. Therefore, if I draw that income stream out of my tax deferred bucket, I am going to uh, probably pay tax on my social security. So I now have a hole in my social security. How am I likely to plug that hole? By taking more money out of my IRAs and 401ks that are sitting in the stock market. And if tax rates went up to 50%, uh, let's say you got a $4,000 hole in your social security, tax rates went up to 50%, you'd have to take $8,000 out of your IRA or 401k, pay the 50% tax of the IRS to be left over with $4,000 with which you can then plug the hole in your social security. So you're going to be spending down Based on rising tax rates and social security taxation, if you draw that income out of your tax deferred bucket, you're going to be forced to spend down all your other assets to compensate. And people recognize that and they don't want to do that. And so some companies allow for what we call an internal, a piecemeal internal Roth conversion feature, which allows you to draw that stream of income, Okay, allows you to set up an annuity that will produce a guaranteed stream of lifetime income that comes to you as long as you're alive. But it has that, what I call that piecemeal internal Roth conversion feature. So once that money's in the annuity, they allow you to convert it to a Roth IRA over a period of years of your choosing and over in an amount of your choosing, such that by the time you decide to draw income from that annuity guaranteed to come to you for the rest of your life, it's coming to you from a tax-free account. It's coming from your Roth IRA. How would you like to have a Roth IRA that pays an income stream to you that's adjusted for inflation that comes to you as long as you're alive? And if you live to 120, you keep getting that tax-free stream of income. And what if it didn't cause your Social Security to be taxed? What if it allowed you to keep all of your Social Security? So this is, this is something that uh, you can do if you have a piecemeal internal Roth conversion inside an annuity. Well, here is the, the curveball 
that I, I was talking about. So let's say you do an internal Roth conversion over six years, and uh, which means that starting in the seventh year, you decide to draw that guaranteed tax-free stream of income. Well, what that means is that guaranteed tax-free stream of income when coupled with your Social Security will 100% cover your lifestyle needs and be adjusted to keep up with inflation. Well, here is the great part. If you now know, if you know from, from day one that you're going to have your lifestyle needs covered starting in year seven and then in perpetuity as long as you live, you can now say, I am only going to earmark money for year one in cash, years two and three in that second portfolio that we talked about, years four and five in that third portfolio we talked about, The uh, sorry, the second portfolio we talked about, the third portfolio, which covers year six, and then everything else, instead of funding seven, eight, nine, and 10 within the time-segmented portfolio, we can take that money that would have otherwise been invested in that time-segmented portfolio, and we can invest it in the stock market. Now, Dave, you may be asking, why would we feel comfortable investing that money in the stock market? We're still within the first 10 years. Yes, we're drawing money from a guaranteed tax-free uh, annuity starting in year seven, but we are still in danger of sequence of return risk. Why would we want to invest money in the stock market in the first 10 years of retirement? Well, guess what? You now have the luxury you have a permission slip, if you will, to take more risk in the stock market because you have guaranteed your lifestyle needs. You've created a floor of income that covers your lifestyle needs. You've got the social security. You've got the tax-free stream of income coming out of, your, out of your Roth IRA annuity. You now have the luxury of taking more risk with all your other investments. You say, well, Dave, what if it goes down? What if it goes down in the stock market? Well, guess what? If your lifestyle needs are, are covered, you have the luxury of sitting back and saying, I will wait until the stock market recovers before I feel constrained to draw money out of my stock market portfolio. So when you have guaranteed tax-free income for life, it gives you the luxury of taking more risk in your stock market portfolio that you might otherwise have taken. Because remember, the reason why all of the experts tell us we can only take out the four or the three or the two and a half percent is because of the risk of taking money out in a down market. Well, if we don't have to take money out in a down market because we've got our guaranteed lifetime expenses covered, then we can, you know, we can uh, leave the money in the stock market, let it recover after a down year. And then once it recovers, then we can start taking money out to fund those discretionary needs, which might be sending your kid, you know, kids and grandkids to Disney World or uh, paying for that leaky roof or what have you. So you'll learn more about time-segmented investing and how it fits into the overall power of Zero Picture when my book comes out in uh, November. But until then, I thought this would be a good little uh, teaser to uh, tide you over until then. Thanks for tuning in once again. And um, again, if you need help uh, navigating your way to the 0% tax bracket, go to davidmcknight.com. If you need to transition your practice as a financial adv advisor to a Power of Zero practice, you can head over to powerofzero.com. Uh, by the way, if you need to buy books in bulk, you can do so at powerofzero.com forward slash books. And as always, we would love a subscribe and a follow on Twitter if you would be so kind. We will look forward to chatting with you next week. <music>